Good morning. I'm Verna Kripe, and I'm here to share my faith story with you. I was born as child number eight in a family of ten children. With that many children and my father being a small church pastor, we were poor. But it didn't matter to me. I didn't mind picking clothes out of the Sears Roebuck catalog and my mother telling me that a lady in the church was paying for new dresses for me. I didn't mind when there were just two items on the table for a summer meal, a homemade bread and a big platter of sliced tomatoes. And I didn't mind that we children didn't get birthday presents. It wasn't until we were older that my dad's way of celebrating a birthday was to put a dollar under our dinner plate, and my mother baked a cake, and that was it. No f decorations, but a cake. I didn't mind because we were rich in faith. My father taught us to reverence the Bible. He read the Bible to us at mealtime. He helped us memorize scripture. He preached. He preached a lot about Jesus Christ coming back to earth and to take out the believers, the rapture. He preached so much that there were nights I awakened, and if the house was quiet, I determined that maybe the Lord had come, and I had been left, the only one of the family left. And so I would lay there quietly, and I would relax when I finally would hear my father snore, and I knew that the Lord hadn't come, that Dad was still there, and so was the rest of my family. So I lived in that fear for a while, and one night I climbed out of bed and knelt by the bed, and I told the Lord, I don't know if I'm a Christian or not. I know I'm a sinner, but I want to be a Christian, and so tonight make me your child. And I also said, and if I have been a Christian, then I don't ever want to doubt it again. And since that time, I've never doubted that I was God's child. Well, living the Christian life in that home was easy. I just did what everybody else did and thought that I was pleasing God. And so it wasn't until I was married and a mother and a pastor's wife that I realized there were serious flaws in my life that hadn't been dealt with. I had become a very discontented person, self-centered and ungrateful, and all of that led to a lot of anger that came out towards my husband and towards our children. I was frightened because I did not want my children to grow up with an angry mother. I also was concerned because I saw the person I was becoming, and I did not like that person, and I didn't want to become that person, and so I tried to make changes, but the changes were only temporary. Finally, in desperation one day, I called out to the Lord, and I said, you're the only one who will help me. And he was, and he was waiting for me to come to the end of my own endeavors. That was a turning point in my life, because I found that Jesus Christ was real, and that he would meet us at our time of need. And so he helped me develop a plan, a plan of Bible reading and prayer, so that I desired to come back daily and to learn from God's Word. And he helped me to develop a better prayer life where I was honest with God about my anger and my faults and learned to confess them. I journaled these prayers, and I began to see God answer prayers. In fact, at, at least a month passed, and I began to see God making changes in my life. The ungratefulness was changed to gratefulness, and the anger was changed to a peace that came from God. And so I lived on that way, that pattern, all these years, 40 years since then. And so I've learned to walk with God and to anticipate that God is going to feed me from his word and answer prayer. So I should not have been surprised <clears throat> this past summer when something happened. And um, I read a magazine article in the Prayer Connect magazine. And it was about schools in Arizona that were failing. The children were failing in their test scores. There were drugs. There were suicides. 
And believers came in and began to pray for various schools. And as a result, those schools changed. And I, I read this article, and then I read it again, and I began to desire that kind of God's power in my life and in our church. And so I thought I would read it to my husband. And I noticed that I was reading it to him after the evening meal. And I got choked up. And I had to stop reading. And I took the article to a friend in the nursing home. And I started to read to her. And the same thing happened. And that's when I realized God was trying to say something to me that normally I don't get choked up over reading something to somebody. And so I asked God, what is it you want me to do? And I will do what you ask me to do. And so I sat down and I began to write out various things that I could do. And the, what God impressed me with is what happens here on Wednesday nights. So lest you don't think about Wednesday nights here at church, let me tell you what happens. There's an army that comes in. We're all dressed in uniform. We're Awana leaders. And then we're followed. The doors are open and 120 plus children from age four on up through sixth grade come to church. Some come happy, having worked at home on their scriptures. Others come with sadness, with hurt. Some come angry. Some come wanting to let us know that they could be in charge. And so uh, they all need prayer. And we leaders need prayer. And so that's where you come in. I have um, 50 cards like this with the name of a leader and then one, two, or three children who are listed just by first name. And one of our clubs is highlighted, and that means that leader and those children are in that club. It doesn't necessarily mean that those clubbers work with that leader. But anyway, what we're asking is that on Wednesday night, you would pray for a leader and for these clubbers, and then also other times during the week, if you would be willing. We want to see what will happen if God brings his power on all these children in Awana, if children come to know Christ, and if their lives are changed. And what about those children who come from unchurched families? And that is the only church they get, so to say, what we offer them on Wednesday night. And so you will help me fulfill God's nudging if after the service I'll be standing at the back along with Diane Johnson. And we will give you a card. And you may also have a copy of the magazine article that I read if you would like to have it. So thank you.